everybody. So in this video, we're talking about factoring polynomials still. Now, this particular case we're looking at is when a the leading coefficient is greater than one. So we're going to kind of combine some topics that we've been talking about. So when a is greater than one, like in our first example, you're going to have to use what is called the AC method. So here you may have heard this before, AC method and wholeheartedly there's about a million different names that this goes by. I mean, there's all kind of stuff that your math teacher may call this, but I really like this method for factoring mainly because I think it's better than guess and check because I hate guess and checking. I love doing one particular way and always getting the right answer. And this already incorporates some of the things we've already been doing in these videos. So here's what you do with the AC method. You are going to take the A number and we're going to multiply it by the C number. So I'm going to take two and multiply it by two and that's going to give me four. Now we're doing the same thing that we've always done. I need multiples of four that I can combine to get five. So let's start with the first one. One, four. Can I in any way combine these numbers to get the number five? Yes, I can. I can add them. So I need to multiply and get positive four, combine and get positive five. So each of these are going to be positive. Now, this is the part that's different. And you only do what I'm about to do when a is greater than one. These numbers, you're not going to write in two separate parentheses. We are going to rewrite the B term. All right. So you may have heard this phrase in your math class, bust the B. Okay. So we are going to say two X squared and these are each going to get an X. So I'm going to say plus one X plus four X plus two. Now notice what I did. I took the B term and split it apart. This statement should always be true because what's one X plus four X? Five X. So if I simplified this, I go right back to the original question. I have not changed the value of this expression, but here's why I did this because now I have four terms and I can now factor by grouping. And what I like about the bus, the B or the AC method is that you will never have to worry about rearranging terms to do factor by grouping. The AC method will always work that you can pair the first two and the last two. So now I can look here, I can factor out an X and I'm left with two X plus one here. I can factor out a two and I'm left with two X plus one. And now I can factor out the common binomial. So my answer is two X plus one X plus two. And there is my solution. There's my factored form of this polynomial. Really easy. And it's incorporating things we have already done in prior lessons. So let's do another one. What about three times two? All right. That gives me six. Okay. I need multiples of six that I can add together, right? Because the signs are the same. So when I say this, the signs are the same, you think both remember when we were doing this, both signs have to be positive or both have to be negative. So you're going to add those numbers together and I need to get five. Can I add one and six and get five? <clears throat> no, I can't. Okay. Can I add two and three and get five? Yes, I can. So here, both of these are going to be positive because we need to add them together to get positive five. So I'm going to write this out and say, 3x squared plus 2x plus 3x plus 2. And now I can do my factor by grouping. Now you may have a question and you may say like, what if I wrote the three here and the two here, is that going to change my answer? No, it does not matter how you arrange these because remember addition is commutative. So it does two plus three is the same thing as three plus two. It doesn't matter how you write it. All right. Greatest common factor here, factor out an X and I'm left with three X plus two. This already looks like three X plus two. So I don't want this to change at all. So what can I factor out so that I don't change the value? I could factor out a positive one 
because 3x divided by 1 is 3x. Positive 2 divided by 1 is positive 2. So now nothing's changed. And here I can now factor out the common binomial. So I have 3x plus 2 and what is left? x plus 1. Remember, you can always check your work by distributing. If I said 3x times x, there's my 3x squared. 3x times 1 is 3x. 2 times 2, or excuse me, 2 times x is 2x. 3x plus 2x is going to give me the 5x. 2 times 1 is going to give me that 2. So I know this is going to work. All right? So again, 2, negative 5. That gives me negative 10. Okay, so I need factors of 10 that I can write to get positive 9. Now think, one of these has to be negative because they have to multiply together to give me a negative 10, but I want to add them and get a positive 9. So here, negative 1 plus 10 would give me the positive 9. So these are the values I have. So this is going to be 2x squared minus 1x plus 10x minus 5. And now I can factor by grouping. I will pull out an x here, and that gives me 2x minus 1. Here I can factor out a 5, and that gives me 2x minus 1. Now I can pull out the common binomial. And here is my solution in factored form. All right. Now we're going to look at a few examples where we're going to amalgamate everything. So we may have some greatest common factor coming into play. We may have difference of squares. Who knows? We may have a little bit of everything. Okay. So in these examples, remember, greatest common factor you must do first every time, no matter what. If there is a greatest common factor, you must factor that out. So starting with this one, what's the largest number that can go into 8, 2, and 10? I'm going to guess 2. Now I have 4x squared minus x minus 5. All right, now here's our trinomial. We can factor this. A is greater than 1, okay? So we have to think AC method. So I'm going to say 4 times negative 5, that's negative 20. Okay, I need factors of 20 that I can combine to get negative 1. All right, what about 1 and 20? Can I combine those to get negative 1? Not really. 2 and 10, could I combine those to get negative 1? I could not. 4 and 5, could I combine these to get negative 1? Yes. All right, positive 4 minus 5 would give me negative 1. So these are the values I'm going to use. Now, these don't go in the parentheses. Remember, if a is greater than 1, you have to write out four terms. So here, now I have 2. I have 4x squared plus 4x minus 5x minus 5. And within here, I can factor by grouping. So I'm going to pair the first two and the last two. Here, my greatest common factor would be 4x. So I have 2, and I'm just going to use a little bracket right here so that I can separate this. I factor out a 4x, and that gives me x plus 1. Here, I'm going to factor out negative 5, so that way I get x plus 1. Now I can close my bracket. And here, my solution is going to be 2, and then I can write out x plus 1, 4x minus 5. And that would be my solution. And that's all you have to do. All right. How about the one in the middle? What's the largest number that can go into 6, 9, and negative 27? How about 3? So if I factor out a 3, I have... 2x squared plus 3x minus 9. So this I have to try and factor. A is greater than 1, so i got to think about the AC method. So I'm going to say 2 and negative 9 is negative 18. 
And now I need factors of 18 that I can combine to get 3. So what about 1 and 18? Does that work? It does not. What about 2 and 9? Does that work? It does not. What about 3 and 6? That works. Now, one of them has to be negative because I'm trying to get negative 18. But I want to add them and get positive 3. So what about negative 3 plus 6? That will do it. So now I have 3 and I have 2x squared minus 3x plus 6x minus 9. Now I can factor by grouping, so I'll pair my first two and my last two. Here I can factor out an x, so I have 3, factor out an x, and that leaves me with 2x minus 3. Here I could factor out a 3, and that leaves me with 2x minus 3. And now I can write this out as 3, my common binomials. And then what is left? x plus 3. And that would be my polynomial in factored form. Okay, you can pause the video and you can try this example. Try to see if you can get the same thing that I got. Okay, so here there is a greatest common factor. That is 4. So that would give me 15x squared plus x minus 2. 15 and negative 2 is going to give me negative 30, and I need multiples of 30 that I can combine to get 1. So that's going to be 5 and 6. Now, when I com I, one of them has to be negative. When I add them, I have to get positive 1. So the 5 is going to be negative, and the 6 is going to be positive. So here we have 4, 15x squared minus 5x plus 6x minus 2. Here I'll factor the first two and the last two. I can factor out a 5x. That leaves me with 3x squared. Oh, no it doesn't. It leaves me with 3x. There we go. So I have 3x minus 1. Here I can factor out a 2. That leaves me with 3x minus 1. And now my answer is going to be 4 times 3x minus 1 times 5x plus 2. And that's going to be my solution. All right. That's going to be all for this video. I hope that you found it helpful. If you have any questions, please leave them in the comments, and we'll see you all in the next video.